Okay, so I wanted to make a video explaining how to use the extended Euclidean algorithm and use it to find the GCD of two numbers. So let's say we want to find the GCD of 56 and 15. But remember that Bezu's theorem, so for those of you just joining us not, who aren't taking my class, this is Bezu's theorem. And Bezu's theorem says whenever you're looking for the GCD of two numbers, like 56 and 15, there must always be these integers, let's call them s and t, such that 56 times s plus 15 times t is equal to whatever their GCD is. So this is Bayes' theorem. There has to exist that integer and that integer. This is actually turns out to be important in computing, for instance, uh, lots of encryption protocols rely on this computation. And so knowing how to find those integers s and t is uh, useful in a lot of contexts. The nice thing is that the normal Euclidean algorithm that calculates, so remember we use the Euclidean algorithm, to calculate the GCD, you can extend it very slightly to also tell you what this S and T are going to be. So this is going to be the extended Euclidean algorithm, and it's a very simple algorithm, algorithm, very easy to follow, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to calculate the GCD of 56 and 15 using the extended Euclidean algorithm, so at the end we will also know the values of S and T. Okay. So let's get a new sheet of paper here. So we start by, uh, it's going to be helpful to build three columns. So in the first column, we're going to run the normal Euclidean algorithm, which I will show you how to do in just a second. In the second column, we're going to rewrite every line from the first column slightly. And in the third column, we're going to build the solution to 56s plus 15t is equal to whatever the GCD is. Okay, so let's see how to do that. So we start, we want here, we're just calculating the GCD of 56 and 15. So we start by putting 56 on one side, setting it equal to 15 and then finding the quotient and remainder of 56 divided by 15. So the, you should be able to see that the quotient is 3, which is going to give me 45, and I have a remainder of 11. It's going back to your fundamental theorem of fourth grade. And notice what I've done here. What I've done here is I've underlined the uh, divisor and dividend here, and I have not underlined the quotient, I have also underlined the remainder. And we're going to do this each time, and we'll see why I care about tracking these underlined numbers in a minute. So for now, let's just run the Euclidean algorithm. Remember that what happens at the next line of the Euclidean algorithm is that value goes into that slot, and that value goes into that slot, and then we play the same game. So 15 moves over to the underlined spot, 11 moves over to the underlined spot, and now I need a new quotient and a new remainder, and I'm going to under underline the new remainder. So 15, 11 goes into 15 one time with a remainder of 4. Everything moves over one slot. Notice that it's always the underlined things that are moving. The, these ones are just kind of leaving, right? So we have 11 is equal to 4. We need a quotient and a remainder. 4 goes into 11 uh, two times. 2 times 4 is 8 with a remainder of 3. And do the same thing. So the 4 moves over, the 3 moves over. And now, how many times does 3 go into 4? It goes in one time with a remainder of 1. Since we're human, we could tell that as soon as we get a 1, that it has to be the GCD because there's no smaller value that's a greatest common divisor. 0 isn't a divisor. But if we're really going to do the mindless algorithm, we could run it one more time. So the 3 would move over, the 1 would move over, we would get a 3, and then we would get a remainder of 0. As soon as you see the remainder of 0, you know that the last remainder was the GCD. 
So the GCD of 56 and 15 is equal to 1, which we found is the last remainder above the 0. And we're going to just completely ignore this last line. The last line just tells us to stop. Okay. So far, so good. But now what we want to do is rewrite every single line here in terms of the remainder. So right now they're written like 4 is equal to 3 times 1 plus a remainder of 1. What we want to write it as is 1 is equal to 4 and then to move that onto the other side by algebra I have to subtract, right? So it's going to be 4 minus 3 times 1. And so if you think about it, one way to do this really quickly is to write out the same uh, same equations here, but we're going to leave off the equals and plus for a second. So this is 56 underscore. Do not forget these underscores and make sure you put them in the right place because they're going to be important. 3, 11, right? This one is 15 underscore 11 times 1 plus 4. This one is 11 underscore 4 times 2 and 3. This is 4 underscore 3 times 1 and 1. And now notice, let's look at this for just a second. So let's isolate it down here. We have 4 is equal to 3 times 1 plus 1. And what we're essentially doing, we want to write things in terms of this equal to something else. So what we're going to do is subtract from both sides 3 times 1, which makes this 4 minus 3 times 1 is equal to 1. In other words, it's exactly the same form, but the equals turns to a minus and the plus turns to an equals. So we can use that to do this next step really quickly. All the equals turn into minuses, and all the pluses turn into equals. And you should just make sure, look at that to that, that line to that line, that line to that line, that line to that line, and convince yourself that all I've done each time is subtracted off the thing in the center to move it to the other side of the equals. Okay. So now comes the interesting part. We want, we have that the GCD is 1. And by Bayes' theorem, we know that 56s plus 15t equals to 1 has integer solutions for s and t. We would like to find them. So you'll notice that this top line is 56 times something, which is a little implied 1 here, right? We can always say 56 times something. And 15 times something, so it's times a negative 3. The problem is it's equal to the wrong thing. It's equal to 11. On the, so the right side of this first equation isn't correct. It's not getting me what I care about. What I care about is the right side of the last equation. That's the GCD. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work backwards. So this is very important. We're going to start at the very bottom here and work our way up using one line at a time. And I'll just check off the lines as I use them. So you'll see, you'll know which one do you use next is the one above. And so the thing to notice is, well, let's start. So let's write 1 is equal to 4 minus 3 times 1. And for times 1s, we can just drop them. We'll go 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. Okay, so here's one big rule. So let me write this big rule. Treat underlined things, underlined numbers, like variables. So, what do I mean by that? I mean, notice if I had 2x plus x in an equation, and I said simplify that equation, you would say, oh, that's easy. That simplifies to 3 times x, because I had 2x's and one more x is 3x's. We want to do the same thing here, so if I have 2 times 11 and 11's underlined, plus 11 and 11's underlined, then what I'm going to do is treat that as 3 11's. So I'm never going to multiply an underlined thing through. I'm never going to make this 33, because that would lose the data that I've stored. Think of it as like this underline is preserving that number for me in the computations. And doing this is going to allow us to get an answer here in the end. Because otherwise, what 
if I started saying, if I just said, okay, well, this is four and three, I'll just go ahead and do the subtraction. What do I get? I get one equals one, which is not very helpful. The reason this is going to be helpful is notice that my underlined things, four and three, I have equations for over here. And so I'm gonna rewrite three in terms of 11s and fours in a minute. And then I'm going to rewrite the 4s in terms of 15s and 11s. Then I'm going to rewrite the 11s in terms of 56s and 15s. And at the end, I'll have an equation with 1 on the right side and 56 times something and 15 times something on the left side, which exactly solves what I care about. So this is the trick. You really have to think of these underlines, or you could use a colored pencil for these numbers, but you really need to think of it not as 4, but like x4 and x3 and x1. Like they're new variables and they can't be combined with each other. We're not going to combine them. Okay. So that said, let's, let's play the game. So what do we do? We took the very last line. Last line is important. We're going to go up. We wrote it down over here. And now let me check off. I've used that last line and now I'm going to go to the second to the last line. And notice that the second to the last line has three equal to something and I have a three in my equation. So I'm now going to perform the substitution using the last line. So this becomes, the four comes down, minus, and instead of three, I'm gonna substitute what I have on the left side of that equation. So it goes 11 minus four times two is equal to one, and now let's put the uh, minus sign through, so this becomes four minus 11 plus and we can do two times four is equal to one. And so notice, and I'll simplify before the next step, we have one four here, two fours here. So this becomes three fours minus 11 is equal to one. Okay, so far so good. And now I'm done with that line. Now I go up to the next line and notice that the next line is in terms of four. Four is equal to something. And so I'm going to take my four in this equation and replace it with what it's equal to in this line of the Euclidean algorithm. So this becomes three times 15 minus 11, and we'll drop the times ones. Times ones are, we can just drop. Uh, so that I replace the 15 minus 11 with the four with the 15 minus 11. I still have to bring the rest of my, um, equation down, so that's minus 11 is equal to 1. That brings the rest of it down. Multiply the 3 through, so this it means I have 3 15s minus 3 11s minus another, and we might want to put parentheses there, minus another 11 that is equal to 1. And so what do I have? I have 3 15s minus 3 11s minus 1 11, that's minus 4 11. So let's simplify, simplify. 3 15s minus 4 11s is equal to 1. And now the final step is to use, so we've used this one. So we're working our way up the chain, and now we're at the very last one. And here I have things in terms of 11, so let me plug this in. So this becomes 3 15s minus 4, and I'm uh, substituting in for the 11, I get a 56 minus 3 15s is equal to 1, multiply the 4 through, so this gives me 3 15s minus 4 56s, and then a minus 4 times a minus 3 is a plus 12 uh, 15s is equal to 1. There's some applied multiplications here. And now I can simplify if I have 3 15s and 12 15s, that becomes 15 15s and this is a minus 4 times 56. And so now I have 56 times a number, which is negative 4, plus 15 times a number, which is 15 again in this case, is equal to 1, and so I've solved it. For this, we have that s is equal to minus 4, and t is equal to 15.